Fernando Alonso rewrote the history books, and his rise from a young rookie into one of Formula One's greatest champions was nothing short of extraordinary. Already a Spanish national and world karting champion, Alonso became a test driver for the Minardi Formula One team in 1999 winning his first open-wheeled championship that same season, the Euro Open by Nissan. His subsequent performances in Formula 3000 were enough to earn him a Minardi race seat for 2001. His rookie race was at the season opener in Australia, where he finished a creditable 12th. But in an uncompetitive and unreliable car, his highest finish that year was 10th place at Hockenheim, as he failed to finish 7 and start 1 of the 17 races. There were flashes of his exceptional talent though, especially in qualifying, where his pace over one lap often saw him outperforming the limits of his car. In hope of greater success, he sat out the 2002 season and signed for Renault as a test driver, the team run by his manager, Flavio Briatore. In 2003, he graduated to a race seat in place of the departing Jensen Button and made an immediate impact. In round two in Malaysia, Alonso claimed his first pole position, becoming at the time the youngest pole sitter in F1 history, and went on to take his maiden podium. He backed that up with another third spot in Brazil and was only denied a fairy tale victory in his home Grand Prix by the reigning world champion Michael Schumacher. But it was at the Hungaro ring where he finally tasted the victor's champagne. Fernando Alonso wins his first. The Spaniards' momentum continued in 2004. As Schumacher dominated, Alonso finished fourth in the Drivers' Championship. Renault's upward curve continued, and 2005 saw the change of the guard, as Alonso went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the great Schumacher and came out on top. Hello, guys. You are number one. You are number one, guys. Across the line he goes, Fernando Alonso has his sixth victory of the season. Only missing the podium in four races the whole season, Alonso's seven wins saw him become, at the time, the youngest world champion in Formula One history on an emotional day in Sao Paulo. I came from a country with no tradition in Formula One. I fight alone because I had not any help from anybody all my career and now I think this title is uh, the maximum I can achieve in my life, in my career. His victory at the season finale in Shanghai earned Renault their maiden constructor's crown. Brilliant, Fernando. Absolutely fantastic, mate. Absolutely brilliant job. Thanks from Renault. We are the champions. We are the champions. The team's success continued in 2006, with Alonso dominating the early part of the season, finishing in the top two in each of the opening nine races. A Ferrari fight back saw Schumacher level on points with Alonso as they lined up for the penultimate race at Suzuka, but an engine failure saw the German retire. Alonso took the victory, and his second place in the final race at Interlagos secured back-to-back -back titles for both driver and team. Now a double world champion at the age of just 25, Alonso decided he wanted a fresh challenge and left Renault for the spiritual home of his hero, Ayrton Senna, the famous McLaren. 
In 2007, he was involved in one of the tightest championship races in recent memory. Partnering a rookie Lewis Hamilton, Alonso would miss out on the title by just a single point at the final race in Brazil, where Kimi Raikkonen was crowned champion. But Alonso's relationship with teammate Hamilton and the McLaren management was rapidly heading downhill. You have up and downs and uh, you have uh, better moments and worse moments. And I think uh, this year I had some difficulties uh, with the team, it's not a secret. Alonso returned to Renault for the next two years, although he was unable to replicate his previous success, scoring only two victories, the infamous Crashgate 2008 Singapore Grand Prix and the following round at Fuji. It's back-to-back -back wins, the drive of a great, great champion. 2010 saw another move, this time to F1's most successful team. It's his first race for Ferrari, and he's a winner in Bahrain. Alonso won on his Ferrari debut, but despite four further victories, he missed out on the title at the final round, where a botched strategy cost him a third world championship. And despite finishing runner-up to Sebastian Vettel twice more in 2012 and 2013, Alonso couldn't capture the success in red that he dreamed of. The Spaniard still showed his talent on a regular basis. One of the most satisfying and unlikely victories of his career in front of his adoring Spanish fans. And in 2013, he took his final Grand Prix win to date at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. But 2014 saw the prancing horse uncompetitive, and their failure to achieve success together had strained Alonso's relationship with Ferrari. An unlikely return to McLaren was on the cards. I have that uh, privilege to choose what I want to do, any time I want to do, and uh, whatever place I want to go. So um, everything is according to plan. Alonso's goal was to bring McLaren and Honda back to the front of Formula One. Sadly, there followed four years of frustration, and Alonso retired from Formula One at the end of the 2018 season. Away from the F1 circuit, he's become a two-time Le Mans winner, and he continues in his efforts to win the final race of Motorsport's Triple Crown, the Indy 500. His return to the Formula One grid for Renault in 2021 has delighted fans and drivers alike. When you are outside Formula One, you see that this sport is unique. Every fan that I met, I only found people saying, you should come back, come back, please come back. I'm ready to embrace all of that. I'm ready to uh, enjoy the sport and uh, yeah, I'm happy.